Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Michael Doyle, who is the CEO and brand champion at Brand Iron. .net. Michael's been the changing face of has been changing the face of brand marketing for over two decades. He built a tech-based ad agency DNA advertising into a multi-million dollar company and sold it as part of a national IPO, then founded Brand Iron way back in 2002 and has lent his expertise to hundreds of businesses in dozens of industries around the world. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, let's go back in time a little bit. How'd you get started in the brand marketing business? Oh, uh, that's pretty funny story. Uh, <clears throat> I worked for an ad agency and uh, worked for them for a couple of years. And I showed up at work one Friday and the doors were padlocked and the office was cleared out and it was payday. And I uh, had no idea what I was going to do. And so I got a job waiting restaurant, waiting tables at a restaurant the next day. And over the weekend, I said, what am I going to do with myself? And hey, I'm going to start an agency because I have all these agency client contacts. And this is before Google days. And so I had no idea what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. So I literally was probably too young and stupid to know better. Than, so I just started my own agency and figured out along the way and uh, grew my original agency over 10 year period of time to the point where, like you said, I sold it off, but it was a really no thinking involved and I, I just did it. Well, congratulations on that. And I'm sure we could spend an entire interview or more talking about what you learned along the way of the first 10 years. Um, talk about how the sale came about. Yeah, one of my clients, um, one of my clients was doing really, really well, and um, they were part of an IPO roll-up, and they came to us and said, you know what, you guys have helped us along the way, we, we'd love for you to come join our team, we'd love to acquire you, join our team, be a part of this IPO roll-up, and then you kind of drive our national brand for us, and kind of help us out, and it really was kind of a, a no-brainer, and it was the right place at the right time, but actually, my partner and I at the time really did want to uh, get in front of the dot-com wave and, and set ourselves up for possibly the, that happening. And that's kind of really by setting ourselves up and getting in front of that wave, we caught that wave and took it all the way to being acquired. That is awesome. What, I mean, you cashed out. What inspired you to start a new company? Uh, well, I cashed out, but it didn't work out as good as I had hoped um, because the uh, day before my second anniversary where I had a huge payday, uh, I was fired for insubordination. Um, and what's really ironic about that, there was they bought 16 companies and four of the 16 of us that took more cash and got stock all got fired on the same day for the same exact reason, because they had to write us a hard cash, hard me check and for multi-million dollars. And so it didn't quite work out the way that I had hoped it had. And I spent the next couple of years battling in court um, with them to try to basically save my financial future because they were trying to bleed me to death. And, um, 
I survived that. I actually ultimately won that case, and it really set me set, my, set myself up and set Brand Iron up to get going and go, get going down a, a good and healthy path. But it was brutal going through that entire process. I mean, absolutely brutal. I can't imagine. Well, congratulations on getting through it to the other side. What was your vision when you started Brand Iron? You know, my vision at the time. Um, was to really to set up brands and companies um, to be able to um, position brand and position themselves to be able to um, achieve their end goals and objectives. So I really believe that branding isn't just about logos and website, but branding is about branding positioning your company to achieve your desired outcomes. And so how can we put together a branding and marketing agency that really took a look at the bottom line results and how can we bring a position companies to, to, to develop a path, a brand and a position and, and a repeatable and scalable process to get to them to their end goals and objectives, whether that be raising capital, whether it be launching a new product or service or growing and the revenue and, and growing you know, their sales. It was always about how do we bring position companies to drive bottom line results. And so that's really what we set out to do. And we've been doing it now, like you said, for 21 years, and it's, it's worked out really, really well. And, you know, kind of what happens nowadays, if we set our clients up for success, they do really well, we do really well. So it's a win win scenario for both parties. It sounds like it. So and obviously, you've achieved a lot of success along in your latest chapter for the last couple decades. So what do you think some of the biggest mistakes companies make when it comes to trying to brand themselves and communicate their position to the marketplace? Yeah, I I don't think, I think most people when they're trying to do it themselves don't really have an objective view of what not only their, their brand is, but how they really position, how they really are positioned in the marketplace because it's their baby and they love their baby and they don't want their baby to be told that it's ugly or it's not as cute as they think it is or um, it's not as great as they think it is. And so we have to be the bearers of reality or bad news at times and kind of give them an objective opinion about really how how their company and their brand really is and how it really looks in the marketplace. And I don't think that when you try to do that yourself, you get an objective view and and really can take an objective view about not only the messaging, the positioning, but what's unique about you, what's different about you, why and how you're better. I think having that external view really does help quite a bit. Absolutely. I would agree 100% there. Who's an ideal client for you? You know, an ideal client is we have three different types of clients. We have what we call um, small and starting or startup businesses that have a little capital. And so they either want to raise capital or bring in a position themselves to take a product or market the service. We have what we call merging businesses anywhere from like five to $25 million in revenue. And they want to get to, let's say, 50 to $100 million in revenue. And then we also have quite a few what we call large and or enterprise size clients that are trying to be a little more entrepreneurial or track and measure the effectiveness of what they're doing and so they can become repeatable and scalable. Um, also another really good client for us is a client looking to raise capital or looking to get acquired. We can help them put together a pitch deck, a capital raise deck or a management presentation that would help them really refine the message, really clearly communicate what their brand story is as well as really communicate what we call their financial story and who they are, why and how they're better and what they're trying to get accomplished and how do we effectively communicate that story and help them be able to not only take that to market, but help raise capital or help them achieve the goals and objectives and really help them do that in an efficient and timely fashion. That sounds like obviously incredibly beneficial. And we do uh, um, some work in the IA space as well. You're helping them create those materials. Are you then say like doing a direct mail campaign to 200,000 investors to try and get people to write checks? Or are you, you, you helping them create the materials they need to then go to the marketplace separately? 
Um, we, we, we could do both. We, we really help them put together a deck to be able to effectively communicate that story because really at the end of the day, you're, you've got to tell a really good story about your brand, about your company, how and why this makes sense, how large the opportunity is, how, what this investment opportunity looks like and how do you effectively communicate that story. But then we also done so many of these decks over so many years We've got all these capital partners have come to us and say, hey, we would love to take a look at a deck. We'd love an introduction to something that's unique, whether it be in healthcare or in private equity or venture capital or technology or real estate or whatever. And so now not only do we help put together the deck, but then we help make a lot of introductions and try to help these clients as much as we can. Because if I help not only tell a really good story for them that really resonates and they raise some capital or they get acquired, guess what? They've got a lot of capital that they need to be able to spend to help them get to that next level, whatever that is. And since we have that relationship, I'd say nine times out of 10, we get to be the ones to help them execute that game plan. Well, that's awesome. Talk, uh, I know you have quite probably a shoebox full of client <laughs> result case studies. So, and if you need to withhold identity, you can call it the ABC company, but yeah. for the example or two of companies, what they were looking for when they hired you and then kind of the magical transformation that you guys were able to make happen. Sure. I mean, one of my best stories was a technology company. I'll just say it's Techco, right? Um, where we did what we call the $500 logo at the very, very beginning when they were just getting started. It was IT services company. And they came to us and, and they said, we don't have a whole lot of money, but we need a logo and we need a brand. And we did it for next to nothing. And we called it the $500 brand, $500 logo company. Well, we worked with them and we helped get through those initial startup stages. And over the next dozen years, they went from spending $500 a year with us to spending over half a million dollars a year with us because they grew into a billion dollar enterprise. Um, in the technology space, and they became by far and away a gigantic success story. But we had to help them get out of the gates, get down that path, driving revenue, and it became a win-win scenario for both of us. And it's, uh, we love those scenarios where we can help consult with a company, help them set them up for success. And we love those par strategic partners where we can help one another grow together and achieve and realize those desired outcomes together as, as a really a, 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 a hand in hand partnership. Those, you know, we love those type of scenarios. Yeah, that makes sense. Everybody gets to win. Um, you talk about, you've built an incredible team along the way. Talk about your team. Yeah, there's now like 15 of us. It's really kind of changed and evolved over the last couple of years, especially with going through ahead, having gone through COVID, you know, um, we really had to reinvent ourselves the last couple of years. So we had a traditional office and now we kind of have a co-working space and we have a hybrid working model. Um, so, but we we really grown and expanded, um, but we've been able to do that by reinventing ourselves and putting together a lot of processes and systems in place to allow us to be able to effectively communicate, effectively project manage but also be able to effectively track and measure um, what's working and what's not working for these clients and to be able to get together, problem solve together as a team internally, but also problem solve with our clients and kind of walk them through this journey and pathway to helping them get to their, where they want to be. Uh, so it's really been an evolution as a team growing, as well as kind of developing and implementing the tools to be able to track and measure the effectiveness that's really, really allowed us to grow and evolve coming through COVID. And it's really taken us off this last year. And we're super excited by 2023 and beyond. Well, I mean, you've alluded to the constant rate of change in the marketing and advertising industry seems every couple of weeks, there's some other new social network or app that we're all supposed to be on and is the next big thing. How do you stay on top of it all? Yeah, you, you got to do, you got to do a bunch of different things, but you know, I think the first and foremost thing we do is we, as a team, we meet and talk about new technologies, new, new trends, whether it be in social media or now with like chat GBT or AI um, and we talk about what do we see not only today, but what are we see evolving and where do we want this to grow? And when we do that, not only for ourselves, but the, for our clients as well. And we do like a little experiments all the, all the time and try to see, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? 
um, you know, a really good one was we're like about five years ago now, we really took a hard look at marketing automation. We said, we're going to try this out. We're going to invest some time, energy, and resources. And well, now we have dozens of clients on mark, different marketing automation platforms, and it beca it's become an essential part of how we do business with our clients and how we put them on a marketing platform that allows us to be able to track and measure the effectiveness of all the different things. And it makes being able to track and return on their investment so much easier nowadays. And that's really the ultimate goal for every, every business is can we track and measure this spend and what we're getting for this marketing and advertising spend to be able to determine whether it's working or not and we're getting a good return on this investment or not. Absolutely. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? You know, I, I, it's a couple of things. I love solving challenges. Um, I love figuring out like this marketing automation, or I love working with clients like on a deck and figuring out how do we help package and tell their story. I love the financial stories of that because I would say most people when we're helping a marketing deck or a cap raise deck don't know how to tell good, what I call financial stories. So I love digging into their performance or their spreadsheets or their forecasts and helping them put together and, and package that financial story into a message that really resonates, resonates with potential you know, partners. I also really love at the end of the day because you know, some of my best clients are the ones where we've been working years and years together. And as they've grown, we've grown and have, have really developed some really great friendships, but also when you work together and you, you become strategic partners and you grow together, it's just, it's something so rewarding. It's really, it's really awesome when you have the ability to do that. 100% for sure. For our folks watching and listening who want to learn more about Brand Iron and how you can help them tell better stories, where is the best place for them to go to learn more? Um, they go, go, go to brand.net. It's pretty straightforward. Go to their website. You can reach out to um, reach out there, or you can reach out to me like on LinkedIn, Michael Doyle uh, with Brand Iron. And we're happy to answer anybody's questions, whether they have about their brand or their message or positioning. We're like a cap raise deck. We're more than happy to answer any questions anybody has. Awesome. Well, this has been Seth Green with Michael Doyle of brandiron.net. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We will talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.